So we are back for our uh, second video. So if you didn't see the first one on what is VAT, I invite you to check somewhere in the description below. We'll put the, the link to the, the other videos. So in this video, we'll be discussing more um, how the VAT works concretely on specific cases. And uh, I have together with me uh, Alban Chatagnon, expert in VAT, uh, working in Hong Kong for plenty of years with ASD for four years now. <laughs> And um, yeah, so let's go straight into the question. I think no point to, to keep discussing too much. Uh, maybe one thing I could do though is to put your uh, LinkedIn information down below if people sure. are interested to check uh, sure. how awesome you are. And yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, uh, so let me check where we are here. You know, so yeah, we discussed in the, in the first video that it was possible to actually open a Hong Kong company and get a VAT number in. Uh, in Europe, correct. Can you explain a little bit how this whole thing works and right. um, a bit more details, maybe? Um, sure. So it's quite easy actually to open a VAT um, uh, VAT number uh, for from a Hong Kong company. Um, the what you have to do, you need to work with a local agent, a fiscal representative agent uh, in each country, and uh, those um, uh, company will open a VAT number for you. Uh, so, so this is like you guys. The, exactly. He's the representative agent uh, for you do France, but you do many other countries. We, we, we work everywhere in Europe, so 28 countries in Europe, Canada, US, Australia, uh, in um, almost everywhere. And the way it works, you need to have um, uh, this uh, fiscal representative agent who will be in the middle between uh, the, the local administration and the clients. Mm -hmm. So um, like, well, it's quite easy. Uh, you, the Hong Kong company will, um, uh, once you, you know where you want to, um, uh, to, to work, we had, um, the the fiscal um, agent will just simply open a VAT for you, and you will be able to operate locally as a local company um, with uh, all the advantages. Uh, meaning, you can do a job, you can import, you can export, uh, purchase, you can have a stock. Uh, so put your product in a warehouse. So you can have a stock as well in Europe. Put this VAT. Number. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, yeah. So that's probably like the second reason why people are are coming to me. Like they want to push their product uh, in Europe or Canada or anywhere because with the um, uh, the, the, the thing is like with the, um, uh, the USD and the RMB so people need to to be attractive they, uh, they need to um, uh, in order to be uh, competitive in the market they have to push their good uh, locally so you can uh, deliver your customer way more faster and also you can consolidate all the all the shipment right so you do one shipment um, for instance, from China to uh, to Europe, mm -hmm. and then you can spread goods uh, all across Europe. So there's a lot of uh, reason why you want a stock in Europe, but that's uh, maybe very helpful. And uh, it's easy. And once you have the VAT number, you basically have to uh, to do the, the the declaration every month or mm -hmm. every uh, every uh, three month or annually. It depends of each country. But um, the middle guy, uh, the, the fiscal agent, um, will, uh, will actually do everything for you. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, for the company in Hong Kong, they will continue to purchase, they will continue to move the product, and they will continue to sell. The only difference is uh, that the middle guy will just do all the compliance um, for, for you, that's it. Okay, cool. But uh, there's also something with the threshold, right? If you operate in def different European country for a certain while you can you can keep using only one VAT number but when you meet certain threshold in certain country yeah. then you will need a, a VAT number Correct. there right Correct. so uh, the very first question is actually do I need a VAT number or mm -hmm. why do I need a VAT number um, so we need to uh, answer a lot of questions like uh, where are you um, uh, from where are you doing your business where are you sending to whom it can be to a company it can be to a B2C uh, do you need a warehouse? Uh, do you need to move your product uh, across uh, Europe? So there's a lot of questions that we need to answer in order to understand if you actually need to open a VAT number. Mm -hmm. uh, once you have your VAT number, um, basically if you are dealing only with B2B, uh, only with a business or so business to business, only mm -hmm. uh, if you sell only to company, Basically, one VT number will allow you to uh, to work everywhere. Um, uh, no limitation, no, limit, no yeah. threshold, Correct. in certain Correct. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah. But at one, uh, your product need to go to this country at one point. Let's say you have a French VT number. Mm -hmm. uh, your product will have, have to, to pass go through France. France. Correct. Uh, 
um, but the threshold will um, um, will be an issue for B2C. Uh, so basically the same, you have your French VAT number, you have your warehouse in, uh, in France and you want to sell everywhere. Uh, so you can work with one VAT number at the beginning, but once you have reached all the threshold, um, so each country has its own limitation. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, in Germany, it's uh, 100k, 100,000 euro per year, a calendar year. So once you sell more than 100,000 euro per year, mm -hmm. here you will have to charge your local customer uh, with uh, the local VAT. Meaning, so you mean, but this you mean if you do B2C or B2C, also B2, for the, for B2C, for the B2C yeah, only? Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. And then you will need a VAT number in Germany correct, if you do correct. 100k there. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Okay. Good. So, what are the main, let's say, uh, but maybe we'll talk about that later in the the e-commerce uh, for Amazon. Uh, the main market. Yeah, I would say for the main market, what are the threshold basically? You know, if you come France, Germany, uh, so Spain. So a lot of um, a lot of the country are like it's thirty five. Okay, so 35,000 euro, mm -hmm. uh, like for France, uh, a, a lot of them is um, uh, 35. Germany will be uh, 100, um, UK is uh, 70, um, uh, 75,000 uh, pounds. So, so it's, it's, it's depending on per country, so it will change. But so yeah. uh, as a rule of thumb, most of the time is when you do 35K in one country in Europe, Correct. you will need a VAT number for this specific country. Correct. A uh, hundred k for Germany, seventy five thousand pounds for uh, UK, right? Yes, correct. Okay. And the thing is, um, so this one is just about the amount of money that you are that you are selling in one country. But if one day you expand and you actually want to have a warehouse in Germany or mm -hmm. in Italy or anywhere, and you still, if you haven't reached reach the threshold mm -hmm. because you have a warehouse, you, still you need, need correct. You need to have a VAT number. So even you make like ten thousand euros in Germany, correct. but you want your warehouse in Germany, correct. you need correct. a VAT there. Correct. Why? Because most likely you will uh, you will sell from the warehouse to the German guy. So it's a, it become local sales, and in order to do a big, uh, lo local sales, you need to to um, to, to, to have a tax ID. Okay. So, yeah. One of the things we discussed in the first video is that when you when you have um, a VAT number, you can um, you know claim some VAT basically, you know, get get some VAT back, right? Correct. correct. Uh, is it possible actually to get some VAT back without having a VAT number? Or that's a good question. Um, so the thing, once you have a VAT, you will just do the balance between what you have paid and what you have collect. So if you collect less than what you have paid, you will ask for the money back. Mm -hmm. But if you do not have VAT, uh, if you do not have VAT number, how do you do? Um, the thing is, um, you are still allowed to, to claim for the amount of VAT that you have paid, uh, but you will you won't be able to do it monthly. You will do once a time, once a year, or maybe twice a year. Uh, it's a specific form that you have to fill in for each country. But um, what we have to keep in mind is that each country has its own regulation. So if you go to an hotel in France or in Germany or in Italy, you might be able to recover the VAT on on these services on some country, but maybe in Germany it won't be possible. And it's the same. So you need to understand where you, you where the invoice is coming from, mm -hmm. and also what kind of uh, goods or services are you um, uh, are you uh, trying to uh, claim the VAT for? C can you give a case just to have an idea of how it works? No, like in which case you will not have a VAT number, but you will still so let's As say sure. VAT reimbursement. Let's say you um, you are um, you have a Hong Kong company and uh, you um, you want to do um, um, a fair. Uh, and you have an event in uh, in France and you want to uh, have your own booth uh, at a fair. I don't know, like mm -hmm. uh, any kind of fair. And then so you will pay for a lot of uh, expenses, right? Uh, you will pay for the for uh, the booth yeah, itself, that include you, the VAT. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. absolutely. You will pay for maybe you will purchase like um, samples in, uh, in in France to in order to to show some product uh, to, to 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 your audience uh, stuff like this. So at every single stage, we will have to study: is this country has uh, an agreement with your own country? Meaning mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have to check if those countries are okay to to um, claim the VAT from one country to another one. Mm -hmm. If the agreement is uh, is live, uh, we we will check if this. Particular goods or service uh, fit to uh, to uh, to the uh, to the query that we want to uh, to okay. ask for. So. And this is something your company can do. Of course, as well, of course. Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, other thing also is like, is there any difference of VAT? Like, how, how does this work in terms of VAT when you import export goods? You know, can we touch yeah. it a little bit in the first video? Absolutely. I think, but can can you explain a bit more? Absolutely. 
So um, almost 100% of our clients, they are trading product. So you have to move product from one country to another one. And you will face customs at one point. And you, uh, we, we need to um, uh, make the difference between uh, VAT on the sale uh, and VAT on, um, on the importation. So let's say you import, uh, I don't know, like uh, any type of good in, uh, in January. You will import one container in, in January. So you will import goods uh, in France, the VAT rate is 20%. So you will pay 20% of your goods value straight. Uh, so you will have to pay those 20% to the customs. Uh, and then if you sell your product only, I don't know, three or four months later, like uh, you, the, 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 you will sell those products in, in June. Mm -hmm. So you will sell the VAT with or without, um, uh, without um, uh, via, sorry, you will sell your product with or without VAT. But meanwhile, in, uh, in January, you, st you have paid uh, the amount of VAT, so you want to recover this amount, right? So you will have to do the benefits. Yeah, it's putting it, some, some pressure on your cash flow. Absolutely, basically. absolutely. So, yeah. so that's why we, are, we built a system to make sure that in the very first place, you do not have to pay VAT on importation. And you only pay when you, when you sell. Actually, we are able to make sure that 100% of your business is without VAT if you are dealing with B2B. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, there is some condition, right? Because in but some countries it's not B2C. possible. But if, it's B if it's B2C, so you will import without VAT. Mm -hmm. And then you will sell with VAT. So here okay. is a good business model because you will actually have no cash flow to advance at the beginning, mm -hmm. but you will actually collect VAT. And the, the VAT that you collect, uh, you will only give this amount back to the administration one month later. Mm -hmm. So for the cash flow, it's really, really good. And yeah, uh, because it's like, if you think about it, the VAT is always around 20% of your goods. So it's like, correct. if you import uh, 100,000 euros worth of uh, merchandise, yeah. you have to pay 20,000 euros on correct. it. And that's, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a lot of money. Yeah, uh, even though you will recover uh, your this amount um, later, but mm -hmm. what if you can just not pay it in the very first place? So mm -hmm. that's, uh, yeah. Plus the, the VAT is taken on the value of the goods, so it's it's uh, it's taken on the final price of the good. Meaning, like let's say you you sell uh, glass, you no, know, yeah. and this glass is uh, uh, cost you I don't know one euro, yeah. and you send it to 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 France, and you resell it for two euros. Mm. Uh, then the VAT is on what? It's on one euro or on two euros, uh, the one you have to pay? So the one euro is your purchasing Initially. price and yeah. the two euros it is in uh, your selling price. So basically, if you are a local entity, you will purchase at one euro. The value of the good is one euro, so you will pay on one euro. Yeah. Uh, but if you are a foreign company and if you sell uh, directly to the client in France, so the sales is the reason why you import the goods is because you have sold those uh, goods to the client. Uh -huh. So because the sales is already done, so you will use your your commercial invoice so price, so selling price, okay. so two euros. So on two euros. Correct. Right. So if we don't do the system that you are talking about, you know, you have to pay these yeah. 20% on, on the two euros. Correct. Yeah. Okay. We wow. have options. So the thing is, uh, you want to be 100% uh, uh, compliant. Yeah, compliant. Yeah. So otherwise, um, it's too, too difficult, to, um, too dangerous, actually. Mm -hmm. But uh, you, you might have um, other options like a bonded warehouse. So you, um, you, will only, um, you will only have the VAT uh, or you will have to pay the VAT only when you actually have uh, sold the product to someone. So you will import the product in January. Uh, because it's in the bonded warehouse, so no VAT to pay. It. And when you will sell the product to someone, you will pay the VAT on importation plus the custom duty. Mm -hmm. And then later on, you will uh, you will just collect the VAT from your customer and just uh, do the balance. So there is okay. other options. So depending of what do you pro uh, what, what do you sell from where to where, uh, we need to study. In, we need to have the big picture. Case by case. Yeah, 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 correct, correct, right? correct, correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I think we covered it all for yeah, this section, yeah, right? Uh, anything that mm. you want to add here? So good. So I think we'll close this third video and we see each other for the third one that will focus more on VAT and e-commerce. We'll look mainly at Amazon. We'll talk a little bit about drop shipping, mm. but the most interesting for VAT will basically be uh, Amazon because drop shipping, drop shipping at the moment, as you will see, mm. is a bit gray. So right. uh, yeah. So mm. see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Thanks.